total winos. <laughs> Get chewy. All right. Hello, 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 hello. John Brady, regular wine guy, with my man, Jayton B. Gunter, out in California, eh? Jay, how you doing today? I'm great. What up, everybody? How y'all doing? Uh, ready for another episode of Total Winos. Uh, on, and Total Winos. Total Winos. So we got a That's... fun episode for you. We definitely And do. Uh, we got gadgets. Wine gadgets. We got the spectrum of everything cool, everything... You know, we we left out the really, really bad ones, but we we may talk about them a little bit. So I know I have a couple of things. Jay's got a couple of things. Jay, you're the sommelier. So (laughs) I feel like I should just revert to you because you probably experience more cooler gadget stuff than this guy. Because I'm just a regular wine guy. Hey, we're all just regular wine guys, to be honest with you. (laughs) Some of us just think we're we're important because we have a pin and we're not. (laughs) But... But I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna even go with all. Don't that. even go there. We're not, not gonna even that's go a there. Totally different episode for a totally, <laughs> totally different, different soapbox. <laughs> but fun so stuff. I, but gadget wise, I, I mean, should we just get the the first chach key out of the way? I mean, the yeah, one that's necessary. Uh, yeah. You know, you want to show it off, or you want me to show mine off? Show yours off, man. Hey, quick getting personal, <laughs> pal. All right, it's just really the. Uh, some people call them a church key. Some people call them a wine key. Some people call it a waiter's uh, opener, uh, all of which are correct, right? They have multiple functions. Um, before I was really into wine and using a lot of screw top bottles back when they were plastic on 1.5 liter bottles, um, I mostly use this to open up beer bottles. <laughs> so did I. But you can see here, it's got that, it's got that uh, ability to do so. Mm-hmm. It does have a nice little uh, blade on here. So that you can, it's not super sharp. It's not going to hurt you, but you know, that's to cut off the file foil. Now, most of the people watching this probably have seen used or, uh, you know, uh, experienced one of these in their life. It's just really simple to use Jay in the back in the, up to the, I don't know if he's the right or left of me right now (laughs) on my screen, he's over this way, but who knows? Cause that's the way the recording goes. Uh, And what's fun is that we do like, uh, Jay and I agree, we had some comments about this with Jenny uh, on another different episode. Uh, The dual hinged uh, Mm -hmm. uh, wine key, that just gives you a lot more leverage in pulling the cork halfway out and then full on with the uh, lower uh, thing. So yeah, what happens a lot of times with these, uh, with these ones, the reason why I like the double hinge is because sometimes you'll get an older bottle and and it will have a drier cork and so when you just have the single hinge you're kind of pulling it out at an angle and it has a better chance of breaking the cork when you try to pull it out this double hinge helps out a lot because you get to pull it right out like right straight up instead of pulling out at an angle and so it just makes it a little bit easier to get in there and pull out like an older cork or a dried cork and not have it broke break in the glass or break in the in the uh, in the bottle so just something to think about when you're looking for a wine key and uh, you saw me disappear off camera. I just had to turn off a timer before it was going off in the background and totally distracting me. <laughs> what you cooking? That's what you happens. And you can get a bunch of these and there's all different kinds, but it's always better to have one than not to have one. Agreed. Agreed. There are other ways to open them, but uh, so that's the first most important one. Um, which way you want to go next? Should we go to something? Yeah. Let, um, let, actually, useful, you know what? Less useful. Let's go with the Corvin. You got sure. your Corvin? We love the Coravin. So Coravin, right? This has become a godsend with a lot of wine lovers. Um, this is the brand new style of Coravin. This is the little bit more reasonably priced. It's only $99, uh, probably less than that now. When it first came out, um, it was about $99. But this has been out for like the last year and a half. So I think it's probably a little bit more now. Or sorry, a little bit less now. Um, basically, it goes like this. I'll show you with a bottle. So this is the stopper right here. And you open up the bottle like normal. You put the stopper there. And then you would put the core in like so. I'll try to lift this up so you can see. You put this in there. And then you turn it to here, a click. 
and then you would pour it over and yeah i don't know if i have my stuff in here but yeah i'm out of gas but yeah and then you would pour it over and then what would happen is once it once it rotates back over this gas is put into the bottle to keep the wine fresh so it keeps it from getting air in there and air and becoming oxidized uh, that's why people who are wine lovers love this gadget because you can age, you can let wine, you can op put the needle in the bottle and let it. Um, and once you've used this this model or any other you know Corbin model, the bottle can sit there for like another few months and still be fine. And so that's why a lot of wine you're not wasting wine by going bad because you don't have a Corbin. Corbin is a godsend. You have like the newer one though, right? Or sorry, I have one of the one. newer ones, and they have yeah. even newer, newer ones now with more cooler got, gadgets on it. They so got a champagne one now. I couldn't believe that. They have a fun. champagne bottle one now too. Yeah. So mine's mine's similar. Um, uh, the one that Jay has is, and I, I've seen used in a lot of restaurants yeah. and things like that. And uh, depending on how quickly it's used, it may be worth it. It may be not. Mm -hmm. But uh, the one that I have has the. Oops, I do have gas in mine, and I just. <laughs> Uh, but you can see here, this is the needle, uh, yeah. and it's a uh, surgical steel uh, that basically pierces the cork mm -hmm. and then injects the gas and then pulls the wine out. So you're actually, re you don't even have to pop the cork. Uh, nope. Or they have another attachment where if you have a screw tap uh, for wine, you mm -hmm. can use that one. Uh, either way, it's that argon gas that keeps the, uh, the wine fresh, fresh yep. uh, for months maybe years yeah so far, i haven't here. gotten that far but uh the, the oldest one i got mine uh about four months ago and mm. i've just i had a bottle of wine last night that i opened in december and just like any other wine you let it uh you know just open up for you know 10 to 12 minutes mm -hmm. and it get it almost a little bit closer to room temperature and it tastes exactly like when i opened it last time so yeah. i think that's pretty amazing Especially when you get into a higher price wine, it just makes things a lot more economical. You don't feel like you're wasting any of that expensive juice that you, you buy uh, yeah. or try. And it's like going, oh, maybe I don't want to pair this with uh, this meal, but man, it'd be really good with something completely different. Yep. Now you have the option to do that. Or what I even like to do is you can taste, taste a little tiny sample taste and of say, course. oh, this is going to be the one I serve with whatever I'm making tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. whether it be a cheese sandwich to a hamburger to something more exotic, but uh, it's nice to have those options and what a great invention. And they keep coming down in prices, new yeah. models released. I think uh, the one I got, it's even down under $200. So it's, yeah, so that's crazy. Um, it used to be like $400 originally. It used to be, and there are, don't get, there, there are the four and the $500 model yeah. that, that hook up to your app, right? Uh, app, hook up to your phone. So mm -hmm. cool gadget. Big shout out. Thanks, Corvin. Thanks for that doctor who just took his degrees in something else and applied it to this stuff. So he's a good dude too. I met him. He's a really nice guy. Really, really good cool dude. people. Yeah. We love that. Yes. All right. Moving right along. What about another gadget, Jay? Um, oh, I got one. All right. So we're gonna go with the the uh oh. towel for glasses. So I have a right L one. You can get all the different. There's a whole bunch of different polishing glasses or polishing rags that you can get. Um, you know, like when you're doing videos like this, you have to have your wine glasses look somewhat polished, just because you you don't want it to look ugly. I mean, we have high definition cameras nowadays. You know, what I mean, even on our phones, so it picks up everything. So you want to make sure your glasses look good. And if you're working in a restaurant like I do. Uh, and a wine bar then you have to the glassware is important for like people coming in so a lot of people use these rydell see if you can see this rydell uh, polishing rags um or just use microfiber rags um to polish their glasses it's not essential i mean but it is something that um i think is important oh jay i think we lost your audio um i'll, I'll you back yeah i'm back Cool. So uh, what were you saying? Uh, cut out there. It's not essential. I was saying uh, it's not essential, but it is. I feel like it is important if you're trying to um, shoot video with wine glasses, or if you work in a restaurant, or if you just want to like have a pretty glass or whatever before you put the liquid in. Um, that's a really really cool polishing rag to have. Either one, microfiber or the uh, or the right L one. Yeah, and I have a. Uh, uh, it's off camera, so I'll grab it in a second. But. Um, 
I, I like using STEM glasses because uh, I think I learned this from you, Jay, and not so much learned it from you, but kind of adopted your philosophy. It's like, look, I'm not going to drink when I'm sad or mad. And uh, that kind of led me to believe it's like, well, when I'm drinking wine, even if I do it on a regular basis, I still want it to be an occasion. And mm -hmm. I do want a STEM glass. I have lots of glasses that are stemless. You can throw them in the dishwasher, easy cleanup. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly a porch pound in time for those, right? Yes. But it's nice to have a clean glass with a clean rim, especially if we're just enjoying one glass of wine. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I hand wash mine. I know they're dishwasher safe, a lot, a lot of the ones I use. Mm -hmm. And I just take a little extra care and it's just kind of like wines. It's almost like a little meditative uh, wind down to the day. Yeah, man. Just I think things. The glass or touching it up before serving. So uh, it's just yeah. a fun little thing. I feel like a lot of times what, what happens is, uh, you know, we get used to doing certain things. And so be, and so it takes a little bit of its, uh, like the pizzazz behind it out. Like it takes like the, the, uh, the special, how special it is out of it. I like the idea of like what you're doing where you're like, no, I take my little time polishing the glass to meditate. You make a real occasion of it. And I think that's what makes it special uh, drinking. Like you don't always have to be like that. Of course, porch pounding wine is amazing. I do that a lot, right. but <laughs> you know, sometimes when I just want to wind down and relax, I definitely pull out one of my night glasses that I don't normally use. I'll polish it myself. I'll sit it down. I have like a big old, maybe I'll have like a Bordeaux this night or whatever. I'll pour my little glass and I'll sit there and I'll just like enjoy that wine and stuff instead of just like, oh no, I'm drinking all this to the head. And like, you know, like I used to do when I was a kid. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, what else you got? You, you got any other things other than, um, other than glassware? What else you got? You know, uh, so this is another one of the uh, things I use regularly, especially uh, for almost exclusively for red wine uh, is my decanter. And I have, this is a full bottle decanter where uh, basically, I, I just have a white wine here, but you stick it on top, you turn it upside down, and then you can I decant it those. back into the bottle. That is so cool. I've and seen those. I've never used that before. It's, uh, I saw it in a restaurant, and mm -hmm. the couple that we were with, they bought one, and shortly thereafter, we bought one. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Smart. And it is, uh, uh, it's very easy to maintain. Uh, it's really easy to use. And what I love about it is that you, it goes back into the bottle. So yeah. it's double know, if, I, if I know we're just having one bottle, no big deal. I'll just throw a little of my, uh, you know, cleaning water solution in there and uh, just let it sit. And then a super easy cleanup. I just almost just let it rinse out and dry. Nice. Uh, but it aerates it quite nicely. And instead of in the traditional decanters, I like it because it's back in the bottle. I, I still get the ability to pour from mm -hmm. the bottle while it's on the table. And that just adds something to the whole experience. And uh, it takes up a lot less footprint on your table if you're looking <laughs> for table space, which yeah. happens when we have six people in our house. So it's, uh, it's, it's nice for that as well. No, you had a big old family, so. Nope. <laughs> I did not. No, the kids, uh, that the is, kids that make is, it big. Yeah, they definitely do. Uh, that decanter is really cool, though. I have decanters, but that one is really cool. I've seen that done be used before. I just think it's really uh, kind of awesome how you, because we double decant sometimes with like yeah. the bigger wines or even the older wines sometimes, or sometimes when you have those, uh, you get a little cork in your wine yep. and you want to, you have to double decant it to get some of that cork out. That's cool to have something like that where it's easy. You just put it on top and let it drain in and then you put it back into the bottle that way. That's really cool. Yeah. Cause you know, most of the wines that I decant are not going to be corked. They're not, they're mm -hmm. usually not over five years old. Uh, mm -hmm. rarely are they over 10 years old. And, you know, for this, it's perfect. Uh, if I'm going with an older wine, I do have regular decanter. Um, and what I used to do, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you've used these before, but um, more of the rabbit style uh, decanters. I was just about to go there. That was my next right? thing. I knew you had one. I was just about to <laughs> talk about the aerator. I was like, speaking of aerators. <laughs> That's what we so, got. Talk about yours. So this one is cool. Like, uh, basically, you just... It's this small. I hope you guys can see that. Hold on. There's the camera right there. This small. This is. I think this is a Venturi is the name of this. And um, I got this in Monterey one one year when I was out there with my lady. We we're just having a good time, and she's like, "I think you'd like this. I'm gonna buy this for you." I was like, "Oh, cool!" And it works really, really well. It basically you just put it at the top of any bottle that you have, and then you could probably hear it. Hold on. So you can kind of hear the little like. 
air being let in it from the top. Uh, that just helps for like, if you have something that's extremely um, tight, uh, young wine sometimes can be really, really tight. And so, you know, you're not getting to the fruit as quickly as you want. That's air writer will open it up a little bit. It'll get a little bit more oxygen in it um, without having to use a decanter. This is kind of like a way to cheat a little bit to try to get some air into your wine without having to use the decanter. Um, I love this thing. I love it a lot. It's one of my favorite uh, tools to have when uh, pouring wine. I don't use it all the time, but I do use it with some of my younger bottles of wine. Or again, if you get a little cork in that bottle, when you're pulling it out, you don't want that cork in your glass. So I, I will use this aerator sometimes to kind of filter out the, um, the cork too. So just something to have in, in, in your stock and your, uh, I guess your, your tool kit, you know, so. And I've what done about this, you? you know, maybe it's overkill, maybe it's not, but I've even uh, used an aerator into a uh, regular decanter. I've done that before uh, too. And then poured yeah. the decanter into the wine. So not necessarily for the correct reasons, <laughs> just to double the can it so I can get into it a little that much faster, not wait a half an hour, 45 minutes. I hear you. Oh, quick question. Yeah. What are you drinking on while we're sitting? We've been talking about everything except for wine. And I know we're not know, breaking right? down wine today, but we're still got wine in front of us. So what are you sipping on? So I'm sipping on, uh, and I, I've stepped on this before with you guys and gals. Mm. The uh, This is a, uh, a Vidal Blanc. Uh, mm. It's just here in Missouri, and it's a drier side white, especially for Missouri. That's awesome. Uh, traditionally, when I came to Missouri, it was always a sweeter, uh, sugary wines, which I didn't care for and always gave me a headache. But uh -huh. this is a nice, refreshing white. I also like it as a starter for as a palate cleanser. And that's what I'm using today. Uh, I have a tasting later today, so it's, I don't want anything too heavy. It's low in alcohol and, mm. uh, you know, certainly for me. And it's like, okay, that's, that's a nice this little works. refresher. How about you? What are you sipping on? I have, okay, so this is really cool right here. Um, I just got interviewed on this podcast. Um, and um, these guys, the, one of the guys who's the host of the podcast owns a wine label called Nottingham uh, Cellars. He's part owner in the wine label. And so this is a Sauvignon Blanc that um, we uh, I got to taste on camera with them um, on their show. Really, really delicious wine. This is one of the better Sauvignon Blancs I've had out of California in a long time. Uh, the crazy thing is I got blind tasted on this uh, on camera, and I'm 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 rusty, so I haven't blind tasted in a long time, and they got me. <laughs> I didn't I didn't call this right. I called it Riesling, and the reason I called it Riesling was because of the structures. Riesling tends to have a little bit more higher acid than most white white, white grapes. And although Sauvignon Blanc is known for having high acid, uh, it's not as high as Riesling. And this acid is like chilling. Like it's like really like, like ninja down your, down your palate type of acid here. And so I was like, this has to be Riesling. Even the flavor profile is like Riesling. But I called it I called it Riesling and it's Sauvignon Blanc. So. And, and on the sweet to dry scale, because I, totally I think, think of Riesling is, is sweeter. But yeah. Not so no, much. Uh, no, Rieslings, when they're dry, they're bone dry. Like they're like super, super dry. And um, this one is, this is not bone dry, but this is dry, dry. Like this is pretty damn dry finish on this wine. So, and it's very, it's delicious. So, yeah. Well, now I want to, now I want to drink some of that. Look up Nottingham, man, if you get a chance. Nottingham. Um, they're based out of Livermore, but they source grapes from all over the place. This is Russian okay. River, um, South Blanc. There's they're sourcing That's the grapes awesome. from so Russian I River. I think I so. actually saw a bottle of that. Uh, do they sell it all over? Is it in uh, Total Wines? I believe it is. I do believe they have uh, maybe a couple wines in Total Wines. I'm not sure. But okay. I, I'm, I, think, I think they do. Good. So. I'll definitely check that out for myself. Thank you. Thank no you. Problem. All no right, problem. moving right along. Uh, well, here's, here's a tool that I don't use so much um, with another tool that I don't use as much anymore, <laughs> but it came with it, right? So uh, it's the foil cutter. So it just goes on the top of the, the bottle and you twist it and it yep. pops the little ring off the, the foil. But usually what I do 90% of the time now is I just pull the foil right off of <laughs> You're like, I don't have time for all this. <laughs> no, I don't. And then, well, and then the wine kind of gets, you know, the little drip gets behind there and you can't yeah. wipe it off. And so it's like, I'd rather just have it off altogether. I'd rather right. cut it off, uh -huh. pull it off. Not just get me to the juice, them. right? Like, I don't, don't give me, don't waste any time with me. Let me get to the juice. I get I it. I want in. <laughs> I, I hate it. So that came with this guy, which is, a, I, so I actually love this, but I'll tell you why uh, it falls a little short. 
is an electric bottle opener. Oh yeah, I know that one very right? well. Right? So you, yeah. it's cool. And like, you'll still hear it. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's like, a, you know, and the, you could tell that the battery's wearing out. It's been on the charger for the past, you know, two months, uh, but I need it. It needs a new battery. So it doesn't have the power performance anymore to po- pull a cork. And wow. I love it because you can, it does it. It's like, and uh, you know, it's almost like a, a Pavlovian dog type of response. But mm. anytime my wife heard me doing that, she's like, it's wine time. It's great. I've got my time sheets. I hear some wine coming. Because right, it's like, you can hear the pop of the cork and that's cool too. But there's that other level of fun stuff yeah. where it's like, ooh, it's coming. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, these are these range in price anywhere from forty to one hundred and forty dollars. And my aunt has one of those. Re- replacing the battery costs about the same. So uh, <laughs> Jesus, like, really? well, nah, I'm not ready to do that. I'll keep using my wine key. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. I think I have one more thing too that I feel like is an, an if you don't have a lot of money and you don't want to have to worry about getting a Corvin. Or anything like that. I feel like, and we use this actually at the restaurant too. I can't even hear you. You're on mute. There you go. I know. My son's right here. So I was yelling at him in the background. Oh, got you. Got you. (laughs) Um, So this thing right here, these are like these little stoppers. You put them on the top. Use this little thing right here. And you pump it right up. It takes the the oxygen right out of the wine. And overnight, these are perfect for keeping your, your wine fresh so just something i think these are necessary uh when you're talking about like you know keeping your wine you know quality and not oh, not oxidized and want to drink it like you know a couple days straight you uh these things are essential um and they're cheap you can get them for like ten dollars you know from okay. anywhere yeah <laughs> exactly so yeah man that, I, I highly recommend those things what out of the stuff that you talked about is things that are you have you feel like are a must-have for a wine person So, oh, there goes Q. Bye, Q. He says bye. <laughs> bye, Q. He's going off to the uh, uh, fourth grade music concert. Um, so I don't know if you can see this. This is the other thing I do. A piece of cellophane. Okay. Right over the top, of, if it's a remaining part of the glass. Oh, you can't see my glass off camera. That or even over the wine bottle itself. So if I just have less than half a bottle left and it's not something that I, I knew I was going to corv in and uh, mm-hmm. I don't want to throw it out, and uh, protect it a little bit, uh, that does wonders. And just like the, the pump, okay. and it's just one less thing to clean because it's a little piece of cellophane that you can pitch the next day. Yeah, but it also, uh, very importantly, especially in the summertime, not so much mm-hmm. right now, keeps the fruit flies away. Ah, yeah, that's important. Those dang fruit flies out Those of your fruit wine. fruit flies get you everywhere, want. man. Oh, yeah. Yes. So I think those are all the gaps. I think we have all, uh, I don't think I have anything left. What are, what are, what of those ones were uh, ones that you feel like are necessary for any wine person? Like, were there specific ones out of all the ones that you talked about that you were like, you know, if you had to have one item, it'd be a good wine key. Yeah, you know, a, you. a dual jointed wine key. Um, I have a couple. Um, I actually like this style of one a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it used to have a logo of a, a winery on it, but it, that wore off. Faded away. Hey, that's awesome. a good problem to have. Right? That means you're drinking a lot of wine. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's but it's it's held up over the years, so it's it didn't break. Uh, it's not a single pull uh, mm-hmm. that I, I have broken some uh, less well made ones before, mm-hmm. but if you have a good wine key, you'll be a very happy wine enjoyer, uh, Agreed. And server uh, for your friends and family and guests and whatnot. So, uh, how about you? What's another? What? What's, an, what's what another? What's another one? Because I think you know you can't get into it without it. You can, yeah. but it's a lot easier probably- to have it. I think you're right about that being the most important thing is to have your wine key. I mean, half key will travel is me. I always, this is like with my, I, when I put wallet, my wallet in my pocket, I put a wine key every, it goes with, it's like on the same area on my side table of my bed. There, these are things I take with me everywhere I go. Always a wine key, always my wallet. So I keep a, I keep a wine key with me all the time because you never know when you're going to have to open up a bottle. I mean, you know me, I drink a lot of wine, so you just never know. Uh, but if, if it wasn't for the wine, if it wasn't the wine key, the other thing I think is important, that's a necessity, necessity is probably this, this little, this little item and the pump. I think those just keeping, cause I don't want to waste wine. Right. And no. you don't want to drink bad wine. No. So always having this at home, 
will, and it's cheap too, because you know I'm always trying to save some money. Always having this at home um, is important for uh, keeping your your wine tight, keeping it good. You know what I mean. So I would say the the the, the bottle pump is a is a really really good thing to keep. Yep, I agree. I have one. I used it a lot, and uh, you know now I just uh, that's good. And then you know going on is you know probably I think we talked about this maybe not. Uh, have one or two good pieces of stemware, you know, just for home use. Uh, yeah. I think that would be number two on the list. We didn't really talk about it, but having one, uh, one or two nice glasses for yourself really rounds off uh, your enjoyment of tasting, I think. Agreed. Uh, and it doesn't Agreed. have to be, oh, this is the white wine glass. It's a red wine glass. <laughs> Get one that you like. <laughs> and go with it, right? Right, that's one that, you, that that feels good in your hand. You like the sound. You know, it's it's pleasurable to you because that's what it's all about. Yep. And if you guys want to continue to get this kind of pleasurable, like uh, you know, wine stuff, please follow us. Please uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Uh, we're gonna keep keep on bringing you wine stuff as much as possible. Uh, as you can tell, we really enjoy just hanging out and talking. We might as well put a camera on and talk about it in front of you guys. So. Uh, definitely follow us and check out our stuff. We have a lot of new stuff coming this year and uh, I can't wait to share it with you guys. Uh, how, how are you doing out there? I, need, I forgot to ask, how, how's the weather out there in Missouri? Oh, weather is that uh, we're getting our, into our springtime weather. So it's middle okay. of March and uh, it's just getting fun, right? So we're in our, you know, <laughs> we, have, we have big swings out here. You know, it's almost like the desert overnight heat and uh, coolness, right? So uh, we're, I think I woke up this morning and it was in the 30s okay. and maybe right low, low 30s. And, you know, we're probably punching into the 60s today. So uh, sunny skies and cool air. You know, I wish uh, I wish we were growing grapes right now because I think the grapes would be really uh, resilient oh, for it. I love it. I love it. I love mm. it. It's good. Well, How about you out there in California? Hey. Oh, bro, you know, it's, it's California, man. Like, <laughs> what can you, what can you say? Even though it has been kind of like, I feel like the weather out here has been kind of bipolar, to be honest with you. Like yeah. it, it, it was a uh, really cold, like la or week before last, it was like getting like forties and fifties, which is cold for us. And then all of a sudden it jumped us to 65 and seventies. And so it just does that week to week. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. The weatherman, I don't know how, how they get paid as much money as they get paid in California because you can't call it. It's hard to call the weather in California. You never know what you're going to get. So it's, it's, it's a day-to-day -day thing. But Top it's job security of being wrong and still being employed. And getting paid all that money. And economists. <laughs> for real. For real. But anyway, guys, uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, Sean, you got anything else to say, everybody, before we uh, you know, sign I just, off? You know, thanks, everybody, for tuning in, wherever you're at, wherever you're watching this, wherever you're hearing this. Uh, it might be on a podcast. It might be on a video. But wherever you're at, we may not see you in person. But we're always going to see you right here on our social media. Thanks for watching, everybody. And, Jay, we will see you sooner than not. Definitely. Cheers, guys. Cheers, everybody. Total winos! <laughs> Get chewy.